the biggest, beastliest phone of the year is here. And the Galaxy Note 9 lives up to lofty expectations. Now, I'm not normally a fan of such huge phones, but the Note 9 is starting to win me over. You might be thinking you don't need an S Pen because you're not an artist or a note taker, but Samsung taught the S Pen a few new tricks this year that makes it a lot more useful for the rest of us. Now, you also might be thinking that you don't need such a high spec phone, but no one's gonna be able to argue with a faster phone and a longer lasting battery. The Note 9 might still have a few quirks here and there, but overall, this is shaping up to be one of my favorite phones this year. Many of the Note 9's improvements are performance related and can be hard to demonstrate, but the S Pen's updates are so compelling, I kept showing them off to people. Yes, Samsung's stylus has long been a hallmark of the Note series, but this year, the company made it so much more useful. By adding a Bluetooth low energy module to the S Pen and a super capacitor to provide power, Samsung turned the pen into a full-fledged remote control. By default, long pressing the S Pen button launches the camera app, although you can change this to any other app you want in the settings, double-clicking it changes between the front and rear cameras, and then click once to snap a photo. It's incredibly handy, and honestly, it's such a joy to be able to set the phone down somewhere or hold it up at otherwise more awkward, further off, more extreme angles, and still be able to trigger the shutter button without having to fumble for the volume button or otherwise introducing blur. People have argued that this is redundant, that you can easily set a timer or use the open palm gesture to trigger the selfie camera. But with the S Pen remote control, you can do so much more. Think, higher quality selfies with the rear camera and switching cameras from afar. You can use the S Pen from up to 30 feet away, giving you plenty of room to work with. I could go for days about the benefits here. Let's be real though. Any feature that makes taking selfies easier is going to have me sold. But the new remote controls can do so much more, like skip through slides in a presentation or tracks in a Spotify playlist. In Chrome, you can press once to go back a page and twice to go forward. When actions are available, a pen badge starts to alert you and hovering over it with the pen tells you what they are. Some of these integrations are less useful than others. Going back in Chrome is easier with the on-screen button, for example. In addition to Samsung, Google, and Microsoft's apps, only two of my third-party apps offer S Pen remote controls right now. Hopefully with time, more developers will use Samsung's SDK to integrate this feature. New remote controls aside, the S Pen is still super useful for taking notes and sketching on the go. Drawing with it on the Note 9's beautiful 6.4-inch screen is fluid and responsive, and all of the useful screen off memo and air command features are still here. The stylus now comes in a color that matches its handset. As you can see, my Lavender Note 9 has a purple S Pen, and the blue model has a neon yellow stylus that pops like a highlighter. Although the S Pen has a super capacitor to power that Bluetooth low energy module, you can still use it to draw even without a charge. After about 40 minutes, I'd start getting low battery notifications from the S Pen, but that just means the remote controls wouldn't work. I could still draw and use Air Command without a problem. Samsung's done a good job of adding a new feature without messing up existing tools here. The same can be said of the Note 9's cameras. Hardware-wise, you'll find the setup here similar to the S9+. Plus. It has two 12 megapixel sensors, one with a telephoto lens and the other a wide angle. The telephoto camera has the dual aperture feature from the S9 Plus, which opens up to f1.5 to let in more light. But Samsung added something it calls Scene Optimizer, which is basically its version of Huawei's and LG's AI photography feature. When you point the Note 9 at something, it will recognize what it's looking at and tweak the camera settings accordingly. Point it at food, for instance, and it bumps up saturation. Look at flowers, and it sharpens the details on the bud. The Note 9 will identify about 20 scenes, and a badge appears on the viewfinder to tell you what it thinks it sees. The changes the AI applied were generally subtle, especially in comparison with Huawei's, which overdoes it on saturation sometimes. It's nice that the AI isn't very obtrusive, but it's hardly a game changer. The Note 9 already takes pretty great pictures without its help. 
It delivers rich colors and crisp details, although it still lags the Pixel 2 on color accuracy. I prefer the pictures from the Huawei P20 Pro for things like food or portraits because the larger aperture here makes focusing on close-up subjects easier. I was more impressed with Samsung's flaw detection feature, which tells you when it thinks someone in your picture has blinked or if your image is blurry and suggests you take another shot. I deliberately closed my eyes in a few of these pictures and the Note 9 never failed to recommend another shot. I do wish the alerts were more precise. Instead of specifically pointing out your subject is backlit or your lens may have been smeared, the notification simply says your photo may have been blurry. Fans of slow-mo will be happy to find the Note 9 can still record clips at 960 frames per second, although Samsung hasn't made it easier to use them before. I missed an opportunity to capture sparklers on a birthday cake, because I thought I was done after hitting the record button, but actually had to make sure there was movement in a demarcated box for slow-mo to kick in. Oh well. For regular video, you can record at up to 4K resolution at 60fps, but not in HDR, despite the phone's Snapdragon 845 chip, which supports that. Speaking of, the Snapdragon 845, together with the 6 gigs of RAM on board, makes the Note 9 an absolute multitasking beast. It's fast, it's responsive, my Instagram feed was ready basically the second I opened the app, and YouTube videos loaded almost instantly. The bottleneck here is going to be your provider, not the phone. On the left here is the OnePlus 6 with the same Snapdragon 845 and 6 gigs of RAM, and you'll notice that when they're downloading the same game on here at the same time, the Note 9 is just significantly faster. Just take a look. They both have the same Snapdragon 845 chipset, the same 6 gigs of RAM, and they're using the same Wi-Fi network. I disabled the mobile data on the Note 9, and the OnePlus 6 doesn't have a SIM card, so really it all boils down to somehow Samsung has tuned its Wi-Fi radio to just be so much faster. Graphics were smooth as I blindly stumbled around looking for opponents to destroy in Fortnite, but the phone definitely felt significantly warmer after just a few minutes. It wasn't uncomfortable, but I noticed it. Meanwhile, the Note 9's 4,000 mAh battery lived up to expectations. Not only did the phone last about two whole days on average use, but it also hit more than 15 hours on our video rundown test, slightly longer than the Note 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. Then there's the stuff I've already come to expect and love about the Note phones. Like a big, bright screen, a slim, elegant design, and impressive water resistance. But there are a number of things I'm not impressed with. The Note 9 will ship with Android Oreo, which is about a year old. Android Pie has already started rolling out to the public, and it's not yet clear when Samsung intends to push the update out for the Note 9. Another feature borrowed from the S9 is Intelligent Scan, which blends face recognition and iris detection for convenient hands-free logins. Unfortunately, it still proved to be an unreliable way to unlock the phone. It often didn't recognize my eyes or my face. Thankfully, the fingerprint sensor on the rear serves as a handy alternative. I'm not a fan of Dex mode, but I appreciate that Samsung has made it easier to access. Instead of having to buy or carry around a dock, you can just plug the Note 9 into an external display via a separate HDMI to USB-C converter to use the phone like a PC. Finally, Bixby is still kind of a mess. The features Samsung showed off at its keynote, like integrating third-party app results without first having to install the apps, didn't work. At every step, Bixby had to ask me for permission to use the app. It would also randomly pull up completely unrelated apps, like flight stats when I asked for directions to the office. Hi, Bixby. Show me the best Chinese restaurants in the area. Which one do you want to go to? Wa Fong number one fast food. Hmm. No. I can't seem to find that contact. Well done. Also, phone. Great. Again. Good job. Tell me a joke. Which of these? Just tell me a joke. Which of these three search terms? Never mind. Compose a tweet. 
Oh, I can't support that function yet. I'll keep improving to provide you with a better experience. As Samsung stressed, this is pre-release software for Bixby. Hopefully, it'll be a lot better by the time the phones arrive on August 24th, but we're not holding our breaths. Still, none of these things are deal breakers. They're mostly optional features that you can avoid on a daily basis. What's harder to swallow is the price. At $1,000, the Note 9 is one of the most expensive phones around. But compared to the iPhone 10, the Note 9 gives you much more for the money. You get a bigger, better screen, more storage, a longer lasting battery, a stylus, and theoretically, better LTE speeds when carriers fully deploy their gigabit LTE networks. The Note 9 is a satisfying update that will please power users, and with its new S Pen features, it even has the potential to appeal to a more mainstream audience. Samsung only needs to iron out a few quirks, I'm looking at you, Bixby, and push out its Android Pie update for this to be the best phone I've seen all year.